play is Children of Lesser God. It is the story of a deaf student and a teacher in the residential school where she um, lives. And the relationship that they form um, and kind of the life that they go through. Um, the, the play is, it's actually a memory play and everything that happens in it is in the memory of James Leeds, who's the teacher. And so everything that happens on the stage that moves the story along is actually a memory from his past, um, including Sarah. So everything that you're seeing is actually something that happened in his past. And so we're taking the journey from the day they met to actually into the future after this has all happened and everything's transpired and where they went. This play is unique. Children of Lesser God actually, if a professional company or a touring company does it and college, um, it's required by the playwright that a deaf student or a deaf actor plays Sarah. Um, it's also required, um, there's two other characters that are deaf in the play, but it's not as heavy a requirement. They request it, but it's not a requirement. We actually, at Glass, for the last three and a half years in Glass Theater, we've had a deaf student who's been a part of our program and has done many plays um, that had nothing to do with the deaf community. And we just happened to know of this play and we decided to do it. I decided to do it and we had auditions and I just kind of crossed my fingers and hoped that my deaf student would show up and of course she did. And she's doing an amazing job because this is pretty much the pivotal role for a deaf woman. I mean, Marley Matlin played it in the movie not too long ago. I mean, it's, I think it was written in the early 80s, maybe late 70s, early 80s, but Marley Matlin made a movie of it <clears throat> and it's a pivotal role for a deaf actress, it really is. So that's it, and we have that, and we also have one of the shadow interpreters, which is a new way of interpreting shows, um, is actually deaf as well. So we're really using a lot of the deaf community and bringing them in and making this easily accessible for them. What is a shadow interpreter? Shadow interpreting, there's basically three types of interpreting for the stage. Um, uh, placed, which is the one that most of, we use most of the time and most theaters in America use, which is where the interpreters are standing off to the side and they're usually wearing black and then they're, and the deaf audience is looking back and forth trying to keep up. Zoned, which is kind of placed, but they move around the stage. They get placed in different locations. And then shadow interpreting is kind of new over the last probably decade. Um, it's growing in popularity and it's basically where I, as a director, get to take the two interpreters and integrate them into the show. They become part of the scene. If they're interpreting for somebody, they're near them. They're in a costume that's similar to the period. They are acting, they have facials, everything. They are part of the character. And so they're just integrated into every scene. That's so cool. <laughs> it's been different. It's, uh, I come from a choreography background. And it really intrigued me in that it's really a movement thing. And watching the interpreters, watching our interpreters for Lynchburg City Schools for the last six years do our musicals and stuff, they're down there and they're acting and they're dancing and everything is going on. And I'm like, that should be with the, that should be with the scene. And it really, really makes, it makes the deaf audience and the hearing audience get to take the same journey at the same time without being distracted by looking over and having to try to figure out what's being said over there. So everybody's t taking the journey together. This play has been the most intriguing thing I've ever gotten involved with. We started talking about it. Um, Catherine McMullen and I, who's the lead interpreter for the Lynchburg City Schools and is my, basically my shadow interpreter director for this play, um, started talking about it last year. And as it built and built and built, it just re I, I started realizing that this is a story that can be so incredible. And the fact that it's a memory play, it leaves, it leaves it open, I can do whatever I want. And I think this Children of a Lesser God has made me as a director really reach in and find creative outlet, creative ways of doing things, different ways of interpreting emotions. And it's made me really, really analyze movement a lot, so. <laughs> Anything else you'd like to add about uh, Maggie being the the, um, the student, Maggie Mills, who's playing Sarah, um, is, uh, she's, 
she's deaf from birth, and she came to EC Glass as a freshman, got enrolled in uh, intro to drama class, and then I met her because she enrolled in my dance for musical theater class, and as a teacher of dance, I went, wait, I have a deaf student that's going to take a dance class, and that's where I really started having to pick apart how I, tr how I do things in that class especially, and she has, she's probably one of the bravest young women, and she's creative, and she's an awesome actress, and I am thrilled with the fact that this play even existed for an actress of her caliber. At this age, to be able to pull this off, I think Marley Matlin would be proud. 